in abundance. It brings enlightenment. It brings knowledge. It brings understanding. It opens you up to the things of God. It helps you to know how to navigate through this life. So whenever God's word is being preached, it's an opportunity to hear from God himself. Father, we thank you. I pray, commit myself into your hands, that, Lord, you will use me as a channel through which, Lord, you will administer this spiritual food this morning. I pray for grace to do justice to what, God, you intend to do today for your children, both in the house and online. We give all glory to your name, that those who are watching and listening, Lord, may they not just be listening and watching, but may they receive what you have prepared. Those of us seated in the auditorium, God, may we also not be distracted by anything, but may we stay put to your word in the name of Jesus. I commit myself to you, Lord. May I decrease for you to increase in me. This is not about me. This is about you. May I, O oh God, be insignificant for you to be significant. We thank you and bless you, even in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you for your attention this morning. Uh, we have a few minutes to share what the Lord has laid on my heart this morning. But I want to just paint a picture for us to uh, consider in our heart that maybe somebody approaches you and asks you about what do you need in this life? What do you need? What do you need? I believe we will think about so many things because some of us, we don't have one need. We have so many of them. So if the person asks you, tell me one thing that you need, it will be a difficult thing because you need a lot of things. But I just want to bring your attention to something this morning that as much as you think about so many things, the Bible talks about one thing that is needful. And that is why this morning I want to speak to you on the topic, only one thing needed. Only one thing needed. Praise God. One of the beautiful things you find in the Bible is that the Bible is God's word that reveals the mind of God the plan of God, the redemption that God put in place for us, where God is leading the world, and where God has purposed to end this material world. And in this world comes with so many things. The Bible tells us about God's original intent for creating humanity and by extension creating the entire universe. Because of man's existence, that is why God created everything that we can talk about, even the seen and the unseen world. God created all these because of his intention to create man. And when I say man, I'm not talking about, I'm not dealing with gender here. I'm talking about the language of the Bible, which puts all genders into one thing, say man, praise God. So when I say man, I'm not referring to you know, the, the, the gender man. But I'm talking about all of us. So God created us. And in the course of life, God also gave us the privilege to make decisions and to choose. So life is more about choosing and picking what you deem right. But God did not leave us there. God also decided to help us to guide us in our choosing or in our decision making. And God also gave us the free will. The free will is that you can allow me to be in or you can choose to go the other way around. But God advised and admonished man that this is the best way for you. But we all read in the Bible, in the course of life, man started making choices and decisions. Some of them are not appropriate. Even some landed man into the situation where we are now. And if you read the Bible, yesterday I was saying that the Bible is a funny book. It's not an edited book. God picked people and the life that they lived, God inspired men to put them together 
to teach us about how life is like. And whatever you choose to do with your life here on earth, the consequences that will come with it. So everything that you are doing, you are not doing it out of nothing. You are doing it with expectation that a result at the end of the day will be produced. Whether you are aware or you are not aware, that is what Solomon said. After considering everything and understanding everything, he said, man has one duty. And that duty is to, one, fear God, and two, obey him. Because everything that we are doing, both in secret and in public, one day we will appear before God and we will account for all. So there is nothing hidden under the sun as far as God is concerned. So God, God continued to allow us and to walk with us on different platforms in different ways. Then God is saying to us through Jesus that, in fact, man, you have made a lot of choices all this while, but let me come in and help you. For you to know that life, everything you consider in this world, they are not needs. They are wants. Everything. There is nothing in this world that is a need. I know the dictionaries don't define it that way. Because the dictionary is not dealing with spiritual things. They are dealing with material things. There is nothing in this world that is considered as a need. Because as per definition of a need is, it is something that you cannot survive without. But I can tell you there is nothing in this world that you cannot survive without. Because you don't have everything, but you are still surviving. There are so many things you consider them as things you, you, you want to have them in your life. You don't have them in a way, but you are still living. So there is nothing under the sun that is a need. Everything is want. And that is why Jesus said it is very dangerous or to your own personal detriment that you consider life as just about acquiring things of this world, amassing material things. These are wants. They are not bad things. We need them to survive here on earth, of course, to some extent. We need the cars. We need the houses. We need to acquire degrees to be able to get a good job, to make money, to acquire skills and all the things that we are doing. They are things that we must have them here but they are not things that we need as far as eternity is concerned. So that is what Jesus is bringing our attention to this, that as much as you want all these things, don't pursue them at the expense of the most important thing that you need. Because none of these things that you are seeking in this world, when, you are, when the time comes for you to leave, they will follow you. None of them. None of the things that we are doing here will follow. But there are things Jesus talked about that you need to find. Because once you find that one, whether you are here or you jump into the other side of life, you are safe. Because as a Christian, you must look at life not just here. You must look at life here and there. The material world and then transitioning into the other side, the other paradigm of life. And there, life is eternal. Life here is temporal. So why do you then spend all your time and energy and everything at the expense of that which will last forever than pursuing things that are just temporal, knowing that if you use all bad means to acquire them, it will not profit you anything. It's important to work hard, but it is necessary to seek the only one thing that Jesus says is needed. So let's look at what Jesus is saying. So in my introduction, I say, in our busy lives, we often prioritize multiple tasks and responsibilities. But Jesus teaches us that there is one thing that surpasses all else. And it's found in Luke chapter number 10, the verse number 42. But I want to read the 41 before I read the 42. It says, but it says, but the Lord said to her, my dear matter, my dear matter, you are worried and upset 
over all these details, there is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. Just pay attention to what Jesus is saying here. That matter, matter, Jesus is speaking. He said, my dear, you are very dear to my heart, but you are worried about and upset over all these details. What is Mary dealing with? Because Jesus has come to their house and in our society, one of the greatest things you can do to a guest is to prepare something for him or her to eat. It shows your care and your hospitality. It means you're a good person. But Jesus is saying that, yes, as far as this world and life is concerned, these are the things that are considered very, very necessary. But I'm here to let you know that it is the other way around. As much as it is good to do this, don't worry yourself about them. Don't let those things occupy your heart. Don't let it be something that, you know, it engages you so much to the point where you lose sight on the most needful thing in life. That is what is happening in today's life. There are many people who are pursuing things that are good, but at the expense of the most important thing. And that is what Jesus is drawing matters attention to. That matter, it is good to be a hospitable lady, to give me that kind of reception. But it is not the most important thing in life. It's not. Because he said there is only one thing worth being concerned about. And Mary has discovered it. And what Jesus is saying, even that one thing is not just something out there you must discover. It means it is covered. It's not everybody who can see it. In fact, when you read the stories Jesus told about the kingdom of God, every story Jesus told, it has to do with the kingdom is not just a plain thing. The kingdom is covered. So he said, a man finds a land, and in that land is a great what, treasure. And that means what? It is hidden. So the man, after discovering that there is such a treasure in the land, he went and sold everything, and he came. And bought it. Jesus said, yes, a man uh, lost one or somebody lost one of his pearls. And then you were looking for it. It means that it is lost, means it is covered. So they has to, he has to do everything possible to look for where the pearl is. So everything that Jesus said about the kingdom, that the kingdom is not a plain field. The kingdom is a hidden thing. That is why it needs some effort. People who understand the kingdom, people who value it, when they hear about it, they chase after it because they know that they have found the greatest jewel, which is the greatest need in life. That's what Jesus said. You know, there is one message that the devil doesn't want you to hear. And Jesus told a parable about that concerning this message. He says that, our lives is like a field that we present before God. He says, some come with the heart whereby when the word of God is preached to them, and Jesus was specific about the kind of message. He said, when the kingdom message is preached to people and they did not pay attention and listen and grasp it, he says, immediately they leave that place, the devil come and steals it. Why? Because the devil knows that the kingdom message it's a message of liberation. And the kingdom message is about what Jesus came to present to us. Jesus is not just a person. We see, one thing that if you are not careful you will miss is that you will take Jesus as just a man. Remember, Jesus from the beginning, he existed as God's word. It was when he was coming into the world to save that God prepared a womb and put that word in that lady's womb and God put a body around the word. That is just Jesus is the word of God personified. So when Jesus said, believe in me, he's actually saying, believe in the message because I am a message. I'm not just a man. I am God's message to you. So everything that I say unravels the mind of God concerning you. Therefore, take heed to what God is saying because that is life. Life is what we are talking about. Beloved, this morning I want to encourage you 
that you must stand strong and firm and continuously believe in Christ and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Don't trade that which you have received from Jesus. Don't trade it. Don't allow the hassles and the challenges of this world to deny you of the privilege that God has brought to you. It is very important. The question you need to ask yourself, and I must ask myself, have you discovered this one thing? Have you discovered it? We need to ask ourselves. Because there that discovers this truth, the Bible says that nobody can take it from them. Jesus said, Mary has what? Discovered it. What was Jesus saying that Mary was listening? That Jesus says, that is the discovery. Jesus was talking to Mary about God's kingdom. Because that was the message. Jesus came into the world to preach. Jesus did not preach any message. Jesus never preached healing. Jesus never preached open doors. Jesus preached repentance, forgiveness that leads into the kingdom of God. His message was simple. That all are lost. But God's mercy is here to save the lost. Jesus said, man is lost. But God has sent me to tell man, you are lost. Return home. That's why one of the most very powerful parables you find in the Bible is the parable of the prodigal son. The prodigal son was in his father's house. As a son means the one who has the right to inherit and that is why when he asked his father, give me my portion of your inheritance, the father couldn't stop him because he has the rights to the father's assets or inheritance. So the father, knowing that his son has the right, he has the free will. So the father could have said no, but he said, I have given you your will. So you can choose, but remember, every choice you make, you will be responsible for it. So Jesus told this story to tell the story of man that God created us and we are his own people and children who are in charge of our father's inheritance and God gave us the right to live. We were enjoying in our father's house until one day something entered into man's head and said, oh, I want to go my own way. That is what Adam did. So the prodigal said, I, said, I want to go my own way. I want to go and explore. I want to go and test. I want to go and do that. I want to go. I want to follow the others. I want to be like the others. People are having fun. People are doing this. And you see people out there. And you think, especially one thing we cannot stand is when we see people on TV and they are wearing nice clothes. And you think that, that is, all those things are good. Let me tell you, most of them are dying inside. Most of them you see that wearing those kind of glamorous things, they are dead in walking. Some of them, they are slaves to many things. Some want your life, but they don't have it. And Jesus is saying that this prodigal son went out there, did his own thing, and then he messed up badly like man Adam did. He messed up badly. He lost his place. But God is always ready to receive us like the father. As much as the father was looking forward that one day the son returned, but other did not go there because it has to do with repentance. God can never force you to change, but he expects us to change. By hearing the message, by the experiences we go through. So the Bible says that the father always looking forward that one day the son will come. And the Bible says, after some years, after everything is gone and the boy's life has become wretched and very bad and very damaging and so much confused to the point that even he struggles to get the few pots that he serves the pigs, the swines. Even the master said, don't touch it. And that is what the devil did to us. We became slaves in the hands of Satan. We showed ourselves in the Satan's hands and we wanted out, but we don't know how to get out. 
It was a tough situation for my girl, and nobody could save us. This boy's life was so bad to the point that he was fighting with pigs for food. But even the owner says, don't touch it. But the Bible says, one day, he sat down. He sat down, and he started thinking. I have played a fool. I have messed up. I've been a bad boy. Then he started recalling. In my father's house, even servants, they eat with golden spoon. In my father's house, everybody has an angel to protect him or her. As he was, the, the, the language, the Bible, some of the verses he says, he journeyed back to himself. The, the longest journey you can embark on life, and it's the most important journey, the travel to yourself. You've traveled yourself on, to a long distance, but now you are traveling back to yourself. It means you are coming back to your senses. He said, I have played the fool. So then he said, I want to go back. Now, the, the attitude of the guy was important. He says, I am going back to beg my father that even don't consider me as a son. You consider me as one of your, what? your servants because in your house, servants even enjoy better than sons at the place where I'm, uh, he, he, found, he has found himself now. Beloved, it's about us. It's about us. Sometimes we think there is something big in the world. Yesterday at the funeral, I was telling people, I remember my personal story when we started life. We were yearning to get something. So in the course of time, we bought a small land and we built a house. Okay, and uh, we were, when we were renting, sometimes we sleep without even closing our doors. You are not worried about, you know, whether somebody will break into your house. Because after all, there's nothing there. So my house is not some, a place where you envy to come. If you were a robber or thief. Then we built a house. And then we decided to move in. And then we realized that. Now we have a house. We need some security. So you begin to worry. Then we travel to America. So the last time I was going to Ghana. I think hey. When I got there I need to get some cameras around the house. I need to get some security fence. I say because I'm afraid. Some people will think that I'm coming from America. I have money. So the, we say, the more you progress in material things, the more you become what? Fearful. I'm telling you this morning, if you like, if we give you a million dollar bag and say, walk from here, just to maybe the, uh, uh, the filling station there, you will collapse. Because in your mind, you think all the armed robbers in town, they've come and surrendered you. You'll be afraid that somebody will stay. So it tells you that there is nothing in this world that brings satisfaction. In fact, the more and the higher you go, the more you feel threatened and the more you feel like you need some security. So there is no place of hiding. Sometimes you'll be surprised to know that pastors, big, you no, know, we call them pastors, they travel all the place with metro men and security because of fear. The rich people, the inventors, the great men, they travel with security. The higher you go, the, 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 the danger, the danger you expose yourself to. So don't think that anything will satisfy. But Jesus said, satisfaction is when you find your place in God. I want you to think about this. Think about this. Where are you? Have you discovered this one thing? Have you discovered? I realize that I can't follow my script. That is why I stuck here. Because our time is up. But I want you to leave this service thinking that you've been coming all this while. Have you discovered this one thing Jesus just spoke about? And that is the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is not a place. The kingdom of God is God in your life. Can you say God is in my life? And if you say it's not just about telling yourself God is, it's not about math talk. Do you have a proven evidence 
that God is in my life? What are your proofs? Because them that God is in their lives, the Bible says they live like God. And it's not by themselves, the human, uh, what do you call it, the flesh, that it takes for them. It is God who is in them. The other Paul will tell you that the life that now that I live, it is no longer I, but it is Christ who liveth in me. When Paul is saying it is Christ, what he's simply saying that my life is filled with God's word. So everything that I do, I first refer to God's word. That is God is in approval. God is in agreement. Does God approve it? Is it glorifying God? Is it honoring God? Because it is what God approves that matters. It doesn't matter who approves what you are doing. If God disapproves it, it is taking you nowhere. So don't seek for people's approval. Seek for God's approval. People will hail you, but it will lead you to destruction. But when God heals you, it brings you to his kingdom. Choose God. Because he is the only one thing that you need. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. That Lord, help me. Help me. I know some of you have found him. Christ is in you. Indeed, you have given your life to Jesus. You have given your whole self to him. And that is what you are pursuing. This thing that we are talking about, Jesus spoke to Mary about, which he reprimanded Martha, that Martha, you worry yourself too much about many things, but one thing is needed or needful, and Mary has found it. It's a journey. It's a continuous journey. It's not an event, but it begins from somewhere, and it continues till eternity. Say, God, give me the grace to grow in my knowledge of you. As I do everything that needs to be done here on earth, may I not lose sight on this one thing. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. May I be willing to sacrifice all. May I stretch myself. Lord, there is a need for you to stretch yourself a little bit more. Some of us, we have a lot of excuses why we are not doing what we know best doing, why we are not honoring God, why we are not obeying his word and his voice. But those things will not warrant you what he has purposed for you. You want to surrender to him totally. On that day, what will be your story? Father, I thank you and I bless you for your word this morning. Myself and my listeners, have mercy on us. Be gracious to us so that we will be able to uphold your word. Help us to pursue this one thing that is needed in life. And that is Jesus, the kingdom of God, and the message from God. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh.